Life's full of choices and decisions we have to make. They can be ordinary everyday things like, what would we like to eat? What are we going to watch? Which one should we buy? It's not always easy to decide, but if we let other people choose for us, we might not get what we want. Choosing for ourselves means we end up with something that's right for us. But what about bigger decisions? Things like, where should we live? What sort of leisure activity should we do? Should we get more education or try and get a job? Those sorts of decisions can have a big impact on our lives. So shouldn't we be involved in making them? Yes. 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 In the past, people with learning disabilities didn't always have much of a say in the big decisions that affected their lives. But things have changed. Now people can take control of their own lives. They can make their own choices about how they want to live their lives. And the Darlington Learning Disabilities team is there to help them. I get a chance to be out on my own. I've got more, more choice. There are big changes taking place in the way that social care is delivered. The old way was for the council to assess what support people needed and then provide it. But these days, that doesn't have to be the case. Care needs are still assessed, but now, instead of having to use the services which the council decides on, people can choose to take money instead, in the form of a direct payment, to be spent on meeting their care needs. It allows them to organise their own care in the way that suits them best and have more control over their own lives. People don't have to take a direct payment, of course. They can still have their care provided by the council if they wish. And for people with complex needs, that might still be the best option. But for lots of people with learning disabilities, being able to make their own choices has made a big difference to their lives. We cover services from housing and social care through to leisure, other areas of culture, um, down to frontline key services. So um, I have a lot of senior managers that sit on my management team and uh, valuing people now is something that we frequently discuss as I see them as a um, a key measure in being able to implement those policies because uh, they employ people, they provide opportunities for people in terms of uh, independent living. So um, I've been able to really get that message across through my management team. The council are working with our partners in the voluntary sector and with our service users to bring in the personalisation agenda. We see this as a very important initiative to help people live their lives as they want to live them and have choice and control over the services that they receive and how those services are provided. Those who decide to personalise their care will have what's known as a person-centred review where their aspirations and their priorities in life will be discussed. We're here for Olive's review today, yeah? And so what we're going to do is we're going to run through some headings that I'm going to ask people to actually stand up and write what they think is good for Olive, yeah? You can write up there that she's got a wicked sense of humour. Can I put that she's very independent? Well, that's really, really good. I mean, there's probably lots more that people like and admire about you. And if we think of anything, we can come back and write it on the boards, yeah? Uh -oh. If I just run through one of the two of the little headings we're looking at now, we're looking at what's important to Olive now and also what's important for the future for Olive. This review will lead to the drawing up of a personalised support plan, a plan that will be reviewed regularly to make sure that it's meeting all the user's needs. Of course, taking control of your own care arrangements involves some big decisions and at times we all need help with those. People who choose to go down this route need access to the right sort of information and support, and there's lots of that available. The Darlington Association on Disability has been promoting independence and choice for disabled people for nearly a quarter of a century. They understand how difficult it can be, organising your own support, and they know just how to help. Uh, Darlington Association on Disability is a user-led organisation, that is to say all the trustees are disabled people and we can deal with a range of inquiries, anything from disability rights through to accessible equipment to where I can go on my holiday. We also have a direct payment support service that provides advice and information and support to anybody who's thinking about or is going to use a direct payment.
Dear do give me some leaflets and help me with the questions I wanted to ask my personal assistant. The Darlington Association on Disability can show people where to find the help they need. And there's an awful lot out there, provided by the council, the primary care trust and other organisations. They're supporting people, which is there to help homeowners or people in rented accommodation who may need support in order to live independently. Perhaps with things like budgeting, paying bills, managing a household. Their needs are assessed and their individual goals and aspirations are taken into account in drawing up a support package that will enable them to live a fulfilling, independent life. The support for people who are tenants extends to those who are planning to rent their own home, as Martin was. I wanted my own flat to build my confidence and independence as it was the right time to move on. The support I need is around my finances and to help me budget my money better. Working hand in hand with direct payments teams, social services, health services and housing and support providers, the supporting people team can help make people's dreams of independent living a reality. There's also help available to make sure their health needs are met. Those who choose to personalise their care arrangements will have their own health action plan, listing the services they need. Maybe things like hydrotherapy, help with speech and language, physiotherapy and so on. And accessing those services and lots of others is made very straightforward. The information we gather through the annual health check and through the completion of the My Health booklet, we'd look at uh, the person's needs to see if there's any identified health needs, any actions that we need to do to meet the health needs and who's going to help to um, improve or maintain the person's health.